Hey, and bestie besties, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming back. I do appreciate it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shalise. I'm 39. I'm a mama, a wife, a worker bee, a big investor and wealth builder. I'm trying to just get my family of five to financial freedom. Um, I document our journey here on YouTube. So I'm just like you. I'm a regular investor. I just happen to make videos showing the process because I, sometimes I feel like, you know, it's good to have a physical representation of what that looks like every week i'm not a guru i'm not a fiduciary i'm not a financial advisor um i do share real numbers which you know i do share real numbers so i try to be open in that aspect and just really share a very down-to-earth approach to what investing is like, please make sure you like share and subscribe smash notification bell so that you don't miss upload every time i post a video so before i get into um our fourth real estate purchase yes if you did not know we closed on a property last week property number four and it was out state i will talk about that so if you guys um are surprised like oh my goodness i didn't know you closed on the house i didn't mention it in a couple of videos and i did like document the journey in real time over on my instagram story so make sure you follow me so that you're kind of caught up so you know you don't come back and you're like wait a minute what happened what happened give us the details i've been sharing the details make sure you subscribe and you like and again check out the channel you know every now and then if you even if you don't watch all the videos just check it out every now and then so that you can stay up to date on things that are happening over here. Um, so before, again, I get into that, <clears throat> a couple of things first. Ooh, my throat is a little dry. A couple of things first. The first thing is I have some really, really big, big news, like some big news. Okay, so come on up. Come on up. Okay, so uh, I talked about Moomoo on the channel many times. I've talked about how much I like using their app. If you did not know, I told you guys oh, in a couple of videos ago that I was was using Moomoo um, to give to my daughter anything that we invest there because she's going to college next year. She'll be 18 in September and she'll be a senior. So we started late. So again, all of you who started late, you know, with, you know, saving and getting your money together, I understand some of us do not see the light <laughs> until later in life, but that's okay. We make we do the best that we can with the time that we have, with the resources that we have at our disposal, okay? Um, but I've talked about Moomoo in the past before. I really do like using their app. They're great for investors who's ready to go like to step two um, and also traders. But again, investors, if you're ready to go to step two, you want to learn how to start reading some charts so that you can see volume, so that you can see buy opportunities, sell opportunities. Maybe you want to see global markets because again, the stock market does operate globally. Um, you can still see all of your dividend income coming in as well. I also love that Moomoo has inside of the app, like many investing classes or courses. So we always talk about do your own research, do your own research, do your own research. Sometimes, especially when I started, what is that? Like, you know, everybody says that, but what is that? <laughs> Well, Moomoo has inside of the app embedded like educational resources. So if you want to know what bonds are, an ETF is, a stock is, a mutual fund is, maybe you want to know what call options are, put options are, guess what? Inside of the app, there's educational resources. You can watch it like inside of the app at your fingertips. So they bring education to you so that literally no one has a reason to say they don't know how to do anything, especially if you are a beginner investor or a beginner trader as well. But one of the things that that, you know, I'm really, I'm excited to share is that Moomoo invited your sister, right? Your investy bestie out to the NASDAQ marketplace on Wall Street in New York City, which is like, what? Like that's when I, when they reached out and told me this, I was like, really? Because again, sometimes, and this is just hum humanity, right? I don't have a fancy setup. I'm filming in my bedroom at five something in the morning because it is quiet in my house. I have children. Um, you know, I don't have a, the biggest investing channel, but the fact that they, they see my perspective. I am the millionaire next door. I am someone who's a regular, regular person who has, you know, you know, work and all that other extra stuff. But on top of that, really am, am, am passionate about getting, reaching not only more women and more mothers, um, but just people in general no matter where you come from men as well have a lot of investing brothers here on this channel you know getting us all helping us motivating us to get to financial freedom so they're inviting us out and you'll see a little blurb up on your screen they're inviting us out to celebrate them becoming a global strategic partner of nasdaq which is amazing and nasdaq and moo moo share the same commitment to empowering investors with advanced trading technology and comprehensive market insights which i think is amazing so they're introducing the insight advantage which is powered by the nasdaq 
total view. So this is great for investors who seek premium and detailed market data on buy and sell offers, ask and bid offers, maybe trading signals, you know, charting trends and things like that, and just better insight. So again, if you are ready to go to the next step, and these are things I do behind the scenes, um, but it gives you a more, more control over your investing, or like I said, if you're into trading, but investing as well. Sometimes a lot of you are looking at particular price points in terms of SCHD or VOO or VTI. And again, I think what Moo Moo is doing, especially being a partner with NASDAQ is amazing, especially with other influencers who, you know, I think are pretty awesome as well. And here's the kicker, okay? Here's the kicker. This video may be a little bit long, but here's the kicker. I can bring my daughter, your junior investy bestie niece, okay? Your niece who I've talked about on the channel, I've had on the channel before, she is coming with me to New York City. So let me take you back. Let me do a sidestep. Let me give you a little quick story time. I have a grandmother who is currently alive. She is 82. She just turned 82. My husband's grandmother is turning 85 this year. So 82 and 85, still alive, living, thriving, in their right minds, healthy, blessed, all of the good things, okay? But remember, their generation, okay? So if you're talking about in their 80s, we're talking about 40s and 50s and 60s where... For a whole lot of reasons, access to financial literacy was not made available, right? And to go from that generation to my daughter, who is turning 18 in September, and she having the experience, having the opportunity to go to the NASDAQ exchange marketplace with her mother, okay? to meet a lot of great people, to make good connections, just to learn and absorb, just to be in, the, in, in that atmosphere. That is generational wealth. That is generational wealth literally in real time. And to be able to take footage and pictures and show my grandmother like what her granddaughter and her great-granddaughter is able to experience that is why I think we do what we all do so we can see it in real time. Okay, guys, so if, if that does not motivate you, I don't know what else will. So again, thank you so much to Mumu for reaching out to me and giving me this wonderful opportunity. And again, you'll see a, a, a clip up on your screen. April 29th, this is going to be happening. And I have some great, great, great news. Mumu has graciously offered to invite two of my subscribers, okay? Two of my subscribers to come to New York City to the NASDAQ Exchange Marketplace from 2 to 4 p.m. You'll see it up on your screen. So I know I'm going to get a lot of interest in this. So what I'm going to do, here's a couple of requirements. You have to be a real person, right? I, I need to make sure you're not a bot. So if you are interested in coming to New York City, now you have to get there. <laughs> But you'll have all of your checking credentials and everything like that. If you are interested, send me an email, mommytradertube at gmail.com. The second thing is that you have to be willing to meet with me on Zoom privately. This is to ensure that you are a real, actual, live person, okay? And the third thing is that you have to confirm that you are able to actually be there okay because it's only two slots and i know i'm going to get a lot of responses to this okay hey guys editing shalice here just interjecting so again make sure you look at the requirements the date of this event is monday april 29th from 2 to 4 p.m eastern for those of you who are invited again make sure you do all four of the things remember my daughter will be picking the two people that come so make sure you do all four of the things she will pick randomly i will let it be up to her i will contact the two people chosen by this saturday april 20th. 20th so that you can have time to prepare and I'll give you the information that you need to access to Mumu to get your credentials. Okay. Again, thank you Mumu so much for sponsoring this and back to the video. Next thing, the stock market. Okay. So yes, I know, even though I have been absent from YouTube, the market has been, let's just be honest, kind of going on a downtrend. It's been regressing. Um, we were overdue for a pullback. I won't be surprised if it goes down uh, 5 to 10% even more. We have another potential war that's brewing um, overseas. We have a high inflation. People are still spending money um, and racking up debt. So, you know, for whatever reasons. And so, again, 
Powell is talking very hawkish, meaning I don't know if he, he may try to do one, you know, decrease in terms of interest rates, but I, it just doesn't sound like it, honestly. Um, but either way, despite all of that, this is not the first rodeo that the stock market has gone through. We buy and hold into what we believe in. So that's why I'm always telling you guys, you have to believe in it. When you close your phone, when you close your laptop and you stop watching content creators, you have to believe in what you own because it's your money. And when, you know, it gets tough, when when the market gets a little, you know, like it starts to, you know, pinch you a little bit, you have to be okay with, buy, with holding your securities okay and everything that i have or I, my husband and i have in our investments we believe in and we just going to dollar cost average again if you've been watching my channel in 2022 chd was not doing good at all realty income is still down a lot of good come look at tesla tesla is down but again if you are thinking five ten years in the future that's what long-term investing is um then these are discounts, right? A lot of us are out shopping Black Friday. We thrive on those deals, those early bird specials. Well, we're getting some specials now. So again, just dollar cost average and what you believe in and everything will be fine. So <clears throat> let's talk about the real estate purchase. I'm really, I'm excited to talk to you about that. And I did make like a mini, mini little vlog that I will share in today's video. So stay tuned. So let's go back to the beginning of this year, I put out a video called my 2024 financial goals. One of the goals that my husband and I had for ourselves for this year was to buy um, a piece of commercial real estate. So we wanted to get our feet wet and really experience that. And I figured, or we figured if we did it the right way, it could be a very you know profitable investment for us. We wanted to get um, a large amount. So I talked about that. We wanted to get either a storefront or a standalone. And to be honest, the pre-approval process wasn't difficult. We go through a credit union. So I'm a big fan of credit unions. Uh, I have my business accounts through there. We have a couple of the mortgages through there, checking account, bank account, like, like a lot of things through a credit union. I just like the, the relationship and the customer service of credit unions. Now they can be a little slow and moving, but you know, the relationship is, is really good. And that's something that you want when you are, you know, an investor or, a, you know, trying to build wealth or achieve financial freedom. Nonetheless, so we go through the process. It wasn't hard to get approved, pre-approved for anything. We have great credit. Our finances are in order. You watch the channel. Um, and so, you know, we go out, start looking. Have, and, and keep in mind, large amounts are not plenteous. Like if you think the housing inventory is tight, it's even worse for something like a larger map. But we were looking around where we live. We branched out about 20 miles or so in all directions so that we can kind of see what was available. We wanted a good neighborhood. We wanted something that was in decent condition, something that, you know, the financials that was given to us from the seller showed that, you know, it was a profitable business. The issue came in, okay? <laughs> the issue came in. We found one that we liked. But the seller just was like, he had brass knuckles. He was not willing to budge. Now, I don't mind paying top dollar for something that's in great condition. This larger mat or the machines were in terrible condition. So let me tell you guys something. When you go into a larger mat, if you ever actually counted how many washers there are, on average, there's about 20 to 25 washers. And on average, there's about 20 to 25 dryers if you actually went and counted them all. If one breaks or two of them break or malfunction and you need to buy a new one, well, you cannot go to Lowe's or Home Depot to get it, right? These are industrial machines. You have to go to an industrial machine retailer that sells these things. And let me tell you, they are not cheap. So if you have more than half of the machines in the laundromat that are on the brink of failing, then that's a cost we have to take into mind. And I think that, you know, the seller could have been a little bit more cognizant of that and willing to budge on the price, but he wanted top dollar as in condition um, and was not willing to replace anything. And again, you're talking about paying top dollar and then we would have to go in here and spend probably $20,000 replacing all of these machines before we even could really get up and running and make a profit. It's just... You have to recognize a bad deal and you have to be okay with stepping back and letting it go. There's nothing wrong with stepping back from a bad deal. And, and here's the thing. I did not, and my husband was on the same page with this. We did not want to 
sign on the dotted line for the sake of saying we had a large mat. That is not how business works. If you're a good entrepreneur or a business owner, investor, you don't just sign on the dotted line just to say, hey, I made a profit or hey, I have a, a piece of real estate or hey, I have this business. It always has to make sense when it comes to the numbers, okay? And you have to trust your numbers. And so we step back. Was it a little bit difficult? Yes, because you know, you go into this, you put your time and your effort and your resources into it and it doesn't work out. And then even more so, you know, the seller was just not, he was not budging at all. So you had to move on and go back to the drawing board. And let me tell you, doing that was probably one of the best things we could have ever done and probably have ever done when it came to our finances because it opened up the door for this huge blessing, this great thing that happened to us with our recent real estate purchase. So let's go into, into that. If you did not know, my father passed back in November of last year. My father died from, um, he had lung issues and he was a military veteran. He was in the Marines in Vietnam um, and he passed in November of last year. Well, his birthday is this month. So of course, family Extended family, family from out of state. All you know, we're all talking. We're going to get together to you know honor his birthday and all of that. Well, I had a, an older relative say we were just chatting, you know, and an older relative said, "Well, I had a, an investor contacted me." So, if you did not know some context, the real estate property that I'm talking about is located in a town outside of Charleston. So about 40, 30, 45 minutes outside of Charleston, South Carolina. Now, I am not new to that area. Ever since I was a kid, I've been traveling to the South. I know the area well. I know the 95 corridor very well. The South of the Border signs, all of it, know it very well. Been traveling down there since I was a kid. But I hadn't been back for a couple of years, maybe five or six years. So um, they had moved, the relative that I'm talking about, they had moved. They was not interested in owning, you know, or being a landlord or anything like that. They're older. They're not about that life anymore. And they had already moved, but, you know, they kept up the property taxes because it's not a whole lot in terms of property taxes. I think less than $1,200 a year. Um, but But the older relative, and actually a lot of them, especially I think from the South, they were very big on keeping it in the family. They did not like talk about wanting to sell it to a corporate investor. They did not want that. They would rather hold on to it than give it away because you got to remember a lot of them, like we always talk about blood, sweat and tears. No, that was literally how they were able to get what they had. Blood, sweat and tears. And so it means more to them than just selling it to a corporate investor. So again, talking about it. And so someone said, well, you know, Shalise, you know, me and my husband, you know, we buy real estate and we're, we, you know, we were interested in buying something, but that deal fell through. You know, maybe you talk to them. Family, we're all family. It doesn't matter if it's second, third cousins, twice removed, we're all family, right? So, um, we talked to each other, myself and the relative, and I said, yeah, no, yeah, we were, we're interested. Um, you know, getting financing or whatever is not a, a problem for us. Um, we're in a good financial place. You know, I know what the land and the home because I visited there many, many times. So I know the neighborhood, all of that. Um, so they said, OK, well, let me think about it, I'll, you know, and I'll call you back. And I told them, I said, give us a number because I did not want it just to be signed over to us again. Just to protect ourselves, it needed to be a transaction. Sell it to us. Even if it was for a penny, sell it to us, okay? Um, so we got off the phone. They called me back the next day, which I was like, okay, okay. They're really serious about this. So they called me back the next day. And it was like, okay, I'll sell it to you for this amount. I'm not going to say the exact amount, but it was under 50K. Um, I said, really? You're going to sell it to us for that? They said, yeah. This is family. Keep it in the family. You can do whatever you want with it. You can put a gas station there if you wanted to, but please just keep it in the family, which was, again, my thinking because the real estate that we have now, that is the plan to keep it in the family, to pass it down. Um, but I said, really, you the price you just said, that's what you would sell it to us for? And say, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, they just wanted to have a little bit of monies to walk away from, um, but you know, that was it. The big thing, again, was giving it or leaving it in the family. So I talked to my husband. I said, you know, they're willing to sell this to us for this X amount of dollars. He's like, really? I said, yeah, they're, they're willing to do it. It's out of state and all of that. We have to manage it, get a property management company. But, you know, they're, this is a really, really great deal. So my husband gave the thumbs up. I gave the thumbs up. But my husband said, well, why do we need financing for something like this? Again, it's under 50K. Why do we need financing for something like this? Why don't we just give cash? I said, really? He said, yeah, let's give cash. 
So I said, well, how will we even go about this? My husband, I'm telling you, this man is a genius. He was like, we didn't go through an agent. We didn't go through a real estate lawyer. And did you guys even know that, that you can actually go through a real estate lawyer to conduct real estate transactions? It doesn't have to be an agent. And let me tell you, real estate lawyers are a bit cheaper only because you don't have to pay commission. Now you have to pay the attorney fees, which ours was $550. You have to pay your title um, searches. You have to pay filing fees, like the little ancillary fees that I think everybody have to pay when you're closing on a property, but we don't have to pay commission. And the house was never listed because again, we went to a real estate lawyer, which again, that's a little tip for you guys, not financial advice, but if you're doing a transaction where you're buying something from a family member, go to a real estate lawyer because they know all the laws in the county and in the state. Um, they know what you need to do to set up yourself tax wise, and they can just make it a seamless process or transaction versus kind of extending it out through an agent. And let me tell you, it was quicker too. I think it took about three weeks for this whole thing <laughs> to happen. Um, but even the lawyer was like, wow, you guys are getting a great deal. And I was like, yeah, but this is a family member, you know, who was selling this to us and, you know, we're going to keep it in the family and, and talk about, again, this is the South. They're big on tradition, keeping things in the family. Cause when we visited and I'm going to show you a clip, but when we visited in Charleston, for example, it looked so different. Remember, I hadn't been in about five years. It looked so, talk about in the span of like five miles, I saw like eight different home communities being built. Now, I know I've been watching things on migration, people moving, you know, to Florida, Texas, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, they're moving there. And as a result, there's a lot of building going on, which as a result increases the property values of those who currently have properties there. So I felt so fortunate and blessed to be able to have, you know, not just have this fourth property that comes with land It's under half an acre. But again, to get a half an acre with the house where I live at, oh, at least $500,000 at least. So to get that for what we got it for and to understand the intention behind why the person, you know, sold it to us, why they did it and understanding what generational wealth is. I know we talk about it with the investments in stock market, but this is a very important part of it too. How people, you know, gained these assets, especially back in the day when it was not easy to gain these assets and then and to keep it. And then you don't want to give it to somebody and then the state come and take it because nobody's keeping up on the property tax payments and things. So to, to have that or to entrust that to us, that is, again, it just lit a fire under why I'm doing what, what I'm doing here on the channel, what my husband is doing, what he's doing on his end, working and building up his business and all of that because it's bigger than us, right? It's bigger than me. It's, this is generational. Again, there's still buildings with Rockefeller on it. And that man has been dead and gone for years. Again, it just lit a fire under me. And I'm so, so, so excited. Yes, we're, I, we're looking at about $1,750 in terms of rent. Um, it's going to be managed by a property management company. Um, and we'll probably fly down once a quarter. It's about an hour and a half plane ride. So not long at all. And again, we're just so, again, if we did not step back from a bad deal and just go back to square one, knowing, you know, there is something out there, we would have never been in a position to take advantage of this opportunity and to pay cash. We paid cash. We took the money out of our savings and paid for this. And that's why you heard me say in my investing plan back at the beginning of this month, we were going to save more do extra investing, but it was going to be less. It was going to be $500 in April. And it's probably going to be $500 in May because we want to build up our savings. We still have a nice save. We have, we still have some cash, but you know, just being able to own something outright, especially the land, the land, the land is the most important part of this. The land is a dream. So we're fortunate, we're blessed. And again, it's just a testament to not force anything. It'll come to you if it's meant for you, okay? It'll come to you. So I'm going to quickly share this clip that I filmed and then I'll come back and close out the video. Hey guys, voiceover time. So here we are in the car on our way to the airport. It was raining and chilly this day, but we were in the airport headed to TSA PreCheck. Please don't travel without TSA PreCheck. It is a lifesaver. We are on the plane headed into Charleston. So that's Charleston right there. It was beautiful, warmer, sunny. It was just overall pleasant. But here I got a shot on an airplane and we are in the Charleston airport, which was very nice. It's clean, it's spacious, it's open. I think they did some updates to it, but either way, it's a very, very nice um, airport. Here we are. We got our rental car. We're coming out of the airport. Again, as you can see, the weather was just completely 
completely different so nice so warm about 75 degrees but here we are driving to the um, town again within the span of five miles there was like eight different home communities that we saw being built it was absolutely insane I told my husband I've never seen anything like it here we are at the law offices we're about to go in we have all of our paperwork in just waiting to be called back by the attorneys into the conference room of course you know this is where all of the magic happens you give your money you sign your life away this is a post closing picture here we are just driving around the town I forgot how nice it is down here very old southern charm beautiful homes nice wide streets quiet clean again I see more and more clearly why land is so important down here especially if people have owned it for years and years and years like my family again I think it's a great investment that we were able to receive we got it at a great price you see a small clip of the house again this is just a few things that still need to be moved out but everything looks pretty solid we went out to dinner after to celebrate of course we had a great time in this restaurant and then we drove over to Charleston just to drive around and just explore again I was so shocked at the the changes I mean it just looks so different new buildings you know streets have been paved palm trees I mean just a lot of people again just a really beautiful um, city just to kind of park your car and walk through a lot of high-end luxury shops are now down here it was not like this when I was growing up and again I've been to Charleston several times because I've been traveling to the south uh, many times but again just to see the migration and people here that's a cruise ship over there that's docked by the way but we went into this like brown building right there that's like a, a farmer's market where you could buy things people were selling a lot of things it was just really really fun to kind of get out and explore you know the major city where our new investment is and so um, I had a great time we'll probably be going down once a quarter it's not a long flight at all just to kind of you know check on the property and just to take in some of the sites because man it just looks so different <laughs> from what I remember here we are the next day we're going back to the airport to travel back home it was really really a fun and productive business trip yes we can write off all of this stuff on our taxes because it's under a business again hashtag real estate and again guys we're back on the plane headed to our home city and again I hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog back to the video all right guys welcome back so remember I am not a vlogger <laughs> But I did my best to try to share it, you know, like bits and pieces without sharing too much information. Uh, but share, take you along on the journey with us. Again, it's our first out of state pur purchase. And I can tell you that talking with some more people down there, um, there's a lot of older folks who, you know, have acres that they want to sell. Like I talked to one gentleman, he had to be like 87, still walking, working, moving. I'm telling you, I love Southern folks. This man said that he would sell uh, a couple of acres to us for a hundred thousand dollars, which that's very cheap. Okay. A, a, a couple of acres for a hundred thousand dollars. So my husband and I are going back to the drawing board. We're actually talking with our credit union about financing because I, I mean, just, this is a really great, I think opportunity if we do this right. So again, of course, if anything moves forward with that, I'll keep you guys updated. Um, but again, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Again, thank you so much, Moo Moo, for inviting myself and my daughter and again, two of my subscribers out to the NASDAQ exchange marketplace on Wall Street in New York City. I'm so excited. Again, if you want to be considered for the, like one, be one of the two subscribers, again, I have all of the information down in the description box below. If you want to sign up with Moomoo, which would be great. So that's one of the requirements as well. You have to have an account with Moomoo in order to, you know, come out to uh, meet me and some other influencers and just to get that experience, to get that experience of being there um, at the NASDAQ exchange marketplace. Like, uh, so <laughs> I'm excited. Let me get off of this because it's almost 30 minutes. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like share and subscribe smash the notification bell so that you don't miss the upload every time i post a video and come on leave me a comment down below okay leave me a comment down below hashtag moo moo um if you are excited about this event to see you know what we experienced to see the vlog or if you plan on you know you know wanting to be one of the people one of the two subscribers picked to actually come to new york city um and hang out with me and a couple of other influencers and um moo moo as well and get to experience all that they have to offer again thank you guys so much for watching and until next time y'all already know i'll see you in my next video which is coming up monday have a good one
Bye-bye.